Hello and welcome to this PDC World Darts Championship review video. So we've done a video every single day of the World Championship. Pine Man and myself covered all 96 of the competitors, which was a bit of a slog, particularly for Pine Man. But it's now over and the final is done and dusted on January the 3rd. Gerwin Price, a first-time winner and the second favourite of the tournament. 7-3, um, I think it was in the end. Forgive me if I've got that wrong. He struggled, to get three, yeah. he struggled to get over the line to the agony of me in my front room last night. But yeah, we're just going to do a bit of a wrap-up, talk about the main talking points, the final itself, obviously. Um, what we got right, which wasn't a lot. What we got wrong, which was ample. Uh, players to note for 2021. Um, and we've got we've had a couple of um, Twitter and uh, comments, questions as well. So we'll cover them. So, yeah, Matt Pye, Man Hills here. So I'll hand you straight over to the main man to talk about the final itself, Price versus Anderson. Yeah, cheers, Adam. It was, um, I, I don't know if you could call it a classic. I definitely think you could call it a classic performance from Gerwin Price. It'll definitely be a memorable final. Um, just for the way that he went about it and it had a mixture of sheer brilliance and then just sheer um, lunacy towards the end where you genuinely found yourself questioning whether he was going to chuck it away from a, a frankly unassailable position. Uh, I think the most important thing to note is Gary Anderson didn't really turn up here, uh, admitted it in his interview afterwards. He, it, well, he, he called it rubbish. He said, if you play rubbish, you get uh, pummeled or, or words to that effect. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call it rubbish. Um, I mean, look, there were some key moments in it for Gary. I, as there is in every match, when you lose a match, you can normally point back to a few moments where it went wrong. Um, I think overall, uh, he was 26% on his doubles versus 45% from Gerwin Price. We said that, that Gerwin Price's doubling was amongst the best in the uh, in the entire PDC this year. Gary Anderson, not so much. So uh, no surprise that that was where it was won and lost, but I expected a lot more in the scoring ranks from Gary Anderson. His treble 20s were all sort of going low on the first start and it, it was really having to scrap and battle just to get tons and and sort of ton 40s occasionally. But um, yeah, it, it was thoroughly outscored, outfinished and, and it wasn't that competitive. But uh, what we shouldn't forget, Anderson went 2-0 up in the first set, made a, a very quick start, missed darts for the first set and then Price reeled three legs off and took it. Um, Anderson did actually break straight back uh, in the second set. And when it's 1-1 there, you're thinking, oh, they, this is going to, to plan. You know, this is going to be a real back and forth final. And then, as I say, a combination of Anderson going off the off the gas, but also going Price putting his foot on the gas. Um, some sensational darts throughout them uh, next few sets, including set six, where he brought the record for uh, a world record for averages in a set at the World Championship. Uh, it was outstanding. I think he averaged 136 in the set, uh, went out in something like 12, 11 and 10 darts uh, in a 3-0 win. I mean, that is literally uh, not giving your opponent any chance whatsoever. Uh, it was extremely impressive and it was just a case of how quickly he was going to get it uh, sewn up. Or so it seemed uh, until he started spurning an obscene amount of match darts. I think he initially uh, missed eight or nine uh, to close the game out. 7-2, uh, allowed Gary Anderson to sort of, I wouldn't even say Gary Anderson pounced on his opportunity. I mean, Anderson looked quite happy to get beat 7-2, to be honest. Well, I think the leg where he missed six, Gary Anderson finished on double two. So that gives oh, you Gary a, Anderson was an way idea back of and, yeah, uh, the leg. Yeah. It was just a strange one. I was found myself shouting at the television saying, if he could just get this set, you know, these match starts might might play on his mind. And he did get the set, but then, I don't know, you just would have expected a bit more from Gary there. I think he should have, um, you know, I'm not saying he wasn't trying to put his foot on the gas, but he almost looked like he'd admitted defeat to me, Gary Anderson. It was a, a long way back, but he then said in his interview, oh, if I got it to 6-4, then it would have been interesting. Well, if only he'd had that attitude at 6-3, because Price's head was still all over the place in that 10th set when he eventually won it. Gary Anderson missed two at double 16 to make it 6-4. He would have been throwing to make it 6-5. Serious uh, distress signals coming out from Gerwin Price at this point. We'll never know what would have happened if that had gone into an 11th set, but uh, I bet Gerwin Price is relieved that it didn't, to be honest. Um, and look, and it, it, I'm pleased it didn't, to be honest, because it would have been a shame to taint what was a, a mesmeric performance from Price. He saved his best till last uh, to average 100 over 10 sets uh, in that kind of pressure. 
I think he hit his first 10 darts at tops, 10 out of 10 on tops, after doing the same on double 10 in the semi-final against Stephen Bunting. It's just, just a testament to how good he is in his finishing uh, on tops, uh, double 10 and double 12. He, he openly admits there is three doubles. He relies on them. Uh, but boy, is he good on them and uh, a very worthy winner. Uh, I know you you put Price up as your main selection, as you mentioned on, on numerous occasions. Must have been a, a very satisfying moment for him to get it done. Oh, well, I tell you what, I needed it. I absolutely <laughs> needed it because all my other bets on the tournament, whether they be outright on the likes of Dirk and Dimitri that I also covered outright and the game-by-game game bets from me were shocking. So, yeah, I needed it. Um, I did trade out a little bit before Bunting, as I did say on the video. So I had him for about a £200 winner. Um, so, yeah, I was I was pretty happy with that. And fun, and I said in the preview video, I was more confident of Price beating Anderson than I was Bunting. And Bunting was a, a bigger outsider in the betting markets. Um, a few things that I would say on the game itself. Um, I did say in the preview video, it might come down to who wants it more. Mm. And that is that was beforehand to me and live, undeniable that it was Gerwin Price. And you can't fault either man for that. Gary Anderson, been there, done that, quite a, quite a bit older, in uh, uh, factually older, and in darting terms, old, you know, been been around the block plenty more times than Gerwin Price. Um, yeah, but I, I, thought it, I thought he wanted it more. I thought Gary Anderson was quite lucky to take set two. Um, pivotal moments early in the game. I think he did the 180 followed by the 128 from pretty much nowhere um, on Price's throw. I mean, someone might know the answer to this, but for, as a price backer, and I've obviously watched every game, the amount of times he lost the first set where he threw first, whether that be the first set of the game or, or more often the second set of the game. He did it against Gurney, come out uh, against Anderson, wins the first set against Rowe, and I'm sitting there, brilliant, right, Price, here we go. Could Should be going 2-0 up. Comes out again in the second set and loses against Rowe. But like I say, I thought Anderson was lucky to, to, to win that. Um, and yeah, like you say, the first six sets, he was absolutely fantastic. That um, The sixth set itself was mind-blowing, as, as you say. But um, I've got no real issue, really, of him, um, of him missing them match darts. I can't, really, I can't really fault him. He'd been superb to get himself in that position. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want that to happen in a, in a deciding setup for obvious reasons, but it would be really hard to get himself in that position. He finished brilliantly in his last two games, you know, including the final. Um, and it's the first time he's ever been there. There was a hell of a lot riding on it. Um, you know, the world championship, obviously, the world number one, half a million quid. Um, you know, there was a lot riding on it. He's got over the line eventually, went one set further than, than it possibly needed to. Um, but yeah, I was just... I was just obviously happy that that he got over the line. I mean, I wasn't particularly confident at any point, really, in the tournament. He's gone deciding sets three times, deciding leg twice. Um, it just That was just to get to the semi-final. Um, so that was the reasons why my confidence um, in my bet had dipped a little bit. But I was committed. And, um, you know, from the end of October, early November, our, our price looked all over the winner to me. And I backed him accordingly. And... Um, yeah, luckily for me, he returned to the form that he showed in the likes of the Grand Prix and the World Cup at the business end of the of the World Champion Championship himself. And um, you know, we saw last year Peter Wright could have gone out to Norm Malik them. I think he survived a couple of a couple of match darts. Um, and you know, that sim- similar has happened to Gerwin Price. So you're always going to need a little bit of luck to to win big tournaments like this. And you know, I was I was happy that that I got it to be honest. Um, when he beat Mervyn King, I remember saying on the video to you that. I thought, oh, that's him in the tournament now. He's settled in. But it was then back to his old ways. Oh, that's probably a bit off. But then it was back to the, the recent norm we've been seeing about him getting into battles and getting him into slogs. And that was the last set this, decider against them, um, Gurney. But I thought it was very good against Bunting in the semi final. Um, obviously, on the double 10 grey, even better in the final. The best player of 2020 by some distance, if, if you ask me. I think it was a deserved win. And like I say, pretty much the only thing the only thing I got right on, on the betting front. Um, Justin Anderson, before I come back to you, Pine Man, I mean, he would have us believe that he almost got to the final by accident. Anderson, uh, you know, with his very friendly and dismissive be- demeanour, if you like, in the interviews. But let's be honest, that is the best we've seen Anderson for at least a couple of years, at least. Um, I think it's the first final that he's made since Price beat him in the Grand Slam, actually. And that, I think that was in 2018. So... I'm on record saying that Anderson's X factor and love for the game has gone or, or diminished. Um, he's made it look like I'm 
partially wrong at times throughout this tournament. Obviously, he's made the final, so it makes me look like I am wrong. But on the opposite side to that, I think, as you've alluded to, he didn't really show the true grit and determination that he needed last night when Price was on the wraps. So maybe I'm half wrong and half right. He says 2021 is going to be a big year for him. If he's right, great. That's going to be an entertaining entertaining year and, and, and bring it on. That was my thoughts. Yeah, well, I, I just I was a little disappointed with uh, Gary, not not just in his attitude, but um, I, I just feel like he thought he fancied it a lot more than he let on. You know, in his interviews, he kind of suggested that he uh, it was a free hit. He didn't expect to be there, whatever. But I think he fancied it. You could tell he fancied it in the first few sets. He was really getting on his own back when they weren't going in and stuff. But ultimately, 25 percent on the doubles isn't going to win you any matches in the latter stages of a world championship. And that is. You can just have one of those days, but God, it must have been so frustrated for him. I think against Evan Peterson, he was at 50% on his doubling. Van Dijvenboder, who's on 50% on his doubling, he was still up towards 40% in the semi final against uh, Chizzy. So to have such a dramatic dip on your doubles is just, uh, it's not something you would expect in someone with his experience. And I'm sure that's probably what must frustrate him more than anything. Um, just don't go in price. It's a funny one. He never actually faced an opponent in this entire tournament that averaged 100. Um, so some people would look at that and think, well, has he just had a bit of a, an easy run? And, and, he, and, you know, he did make hard work of some of these games, even though the scoring and finishing of his opponents wasn't, like, outstanding. I, I would say more that he's managed to generate himself a fear factor, similar to what Van Gerwen had, similar to what Taylor had, where players, even when they get in the position to finish him off, Jamie Lewis... Brendan Dolan, Daryl Gurney. He's such a tough man to finish off. You, you've got this thing in the back of your head that I'm about to beat Gerwin Price here, you know. And and it, it buys you a few legs and it buys you a few key misses and moments when you have that fear factor. That's only going to go up now he's won it. His confidence will rise. He seems like someone who will really relish having a target on his back, you know. Um, that should get him fired up for matches. And I expect Gerwin Price to have a, another fantastic year off the back of it. I don't think we're going to see him have the struggles that Rob Cross had, for example. I think he will relish being um, the man that everyone's going for, the man that everyone talks about. Um, it, it was just the pressure seemed to be getting to him because he wanted it so much. And now he's got it. I think the rest of the field need to be very concerned. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I would just say, we've said, we've covered it on previous videos, but I would just say about um, Price, and it has been well documented since his win, where he's come from. Like, Gerwin Price only got his tour card in 2014. So in seven years, literally about exactly seven years, he's gone from not having a tour card at all, obviously not being in the 60, top 64. He's gone right the way through the rankings. He's won three majors, including the World Championship. It's, it's quite remarkable, really. And, you know, eight or nine years ago, he was playing pro professional rugby, I think for Edinburgh, at a decent standard, like a you know the um, the equivalent of the Europa League of of, of rugby union. I mean, yeah, Pro Twelve, I think. Oh, it is. I mean, it's it's really it's you know quite impressive there. You, well, it is. He's the first. He's the first person to come through Q School to get his card right. and then go on to win the World Championship. And what that should do is give give great hope to the likes of Johnny Clayton, Dirk van Dijvenborder, Jose de Souza, people who've had jobs on the side. And they're wondering, oh, am I good enough to jack in my job and go for it? Go for it. You know, going prices, Sean, when you dedicate yourself to it and really put the hours of practicing and really start believing in yourself, you can get to the top of this game. And there's so many talented players out there who are still, you know, part time or they still do a bit of work on the side or they haven't maybe put 100 percent into darts. The incentives are there. The money's there. The events are there. There's so many events now. It's such a thorough calendar. Um if you've got the talent, there's never been a better time to go for it and go in price is a, is a perfect flag bearer for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just before we move on to cover some of the, the bigger names or, or, you know, latter stage players um, and comment on their performance and, and how they got on, um, just to cover the market for the PDC World Championship 2022. So the tournament to take place in just under 12 months time. Um, Unsurprisingly, Van Gerwen is up there, um, pretty much joint favourite with Gerwin Price at seven to two. And to be fair, that's kind of what it what it looked like in the in early November this year. So you know, not not a hell of a lot's changed from there. Um, 
Peter Wright's in there at 15 to 2. He was disappointing this year. Um, again, he was third favourite about a month ago, and he is again now. Dimitri Vandenberg, 14. Gary Anderson, 14. So that's about half the price he was going into this tournament. Michael Smith, 25. Jose Zazuza, 28. And Dave Chisnell, someone who we're going to um, cover 33 to 1. Obviously, there's plenty of other names in there as well, but that just gives you an idea of what it looks like now. Um, that would bring me on to, to Chizzy, really. Um, Obviously, took many a headline in this tournament for his um, very good performance against um, Dimitri Vandenberg, but absolutely stunning performance against MVG in the quarterfinal, where he beat the favourite, the odds-on favourite at the time um, for the whole tournament, MVG 5-0. I mean, that's going to go down in World World Championship history books. It was absolutely sensational. Um, the best we've ever seen, Chizzy, to be honest. And his second best we've ever seen was arguably the night before against Dimitri. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, it makes it sound a bit clever and negative after the event, but he took he returned to the chizzy that we're more used to in the Gary Anderson semi-final. That's not detracting too much from him. I think he still averaged 98 in a World Championship semi-final. But yeah, yeah. all I would say in conclusion on chizzy, if that chizzy can turn up more often, um, Darts is in a better place. Well, yeah, Dev Chisnell, um, it's a bit of a shame, really. If he, if he just turned up against Dimitri Vandenberg, averaged about 99 and got beat, um, he wouldn't have had a lot of the stick that he's had in recent days, which is the irony of um, of professional sport. Sometimes you, you raise the bar on your own standards and it's to your detriment in time. But it wasn't a surprise to anyone who watches a lot of darts when Dave Chisnell turned up and did those performances because um, although it's hard to predict when he's going to do it, everyone knows he's got that kind of ability in his locker. Um, his 180 uh, hitting is up there with the best of them. The finishing has been what's held him back sometimes. So, Naturally, with these players, if you get them on a day where everything's going in on the doubles, you're in massive trouble. Um, so, look, Dave put two of the, as you quite rightly said, two of the best performances of his career together in back-to-back nights. I, I feel a little sorry for him. I just don't think, look, if he could average, if he could play like that every single night, Dave Chisnell would have won about 10 world titles, you know. So, we shouldn't be surprised and we shouldn't be lambasting him for uh, for not beating Gary Anderson and not maintaining that obscene, almost world record-breaking level of performance that he churned out twice. I thought he did well to do it twice, to be honest, because I thought after Dimitri, he's got to struggle to do that again against MVG. Well, he, he did it. He even maybe went even up a notch. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe a case of burnout. Obviously, when you're a player that's not won these titles, you're going to have people saying, oh, you know, he bottled it, whatever. He, he, he was never going to hold it together. Um I'm not sure about that. I, I, I didn't see him roll over. I th- I saw Gary Anderson um, raise his game. And I think Gary is experienced enough to know that he would rather be playing Dave Chisnell in the semi-final than a lot of other uh, the rest of the big boys. So Gary rose to the occasion. Chizzy couldn't quite get back to the height. He maybe panicked a little bit when he was behind. But look, um, Dave Chisnell can only emerge from this with great credit, I think. Um but you do have to look at it from a backing perspective. Can you ever confidently put J- Dave Chisholm up to win, um, you know, five, six, seven games in a row and win a, win a major tournament with all the question marks over his consistency, his reliability, his um, mentality? That There's just too many question marks to be confidently putting him up. But he's never going to be, um, well, certainly not this year anyway, you're not going to see him running any anything above 50 to 1 because... The, the bookmakers just won't take that risk on a player that has such obscene talent. And it makes Chizzy a very hard betting proposition, I think. Um, so if you're looking at it purely from a punting perspective, great respect, great credit to Dave Chisnell. But I'm not sure I could be putting him up for tournaments with any confidence in a similar mould to Peter Wright, I think. Yeah, yeah, and that's fair enough. Um, do, do, I know you've got one more play to cover, um, Pyman. I'll just um, give a quick line on Dimitri Vandenberg. Um, I thought he'd lo- he lost. I know I backed him, and, and I think you did as well, but lost absolutely nothing in his fourth round defeat, um, to, which was at the time a career best from Dave Chisnell. Only uh, he went and eclipsed it 24 hours later. But, you know, I think um, Dimitri at one stage was 3 0 down, averaging 108. I mean, it was just ob- quite obscene. Um, yeah, and I. You know, I still think he's dangerous going forward. I'll tell you one thing. I would much rather back Dimitri Vandenberg at 14-1 to 1 now for next year's Worlds than Peter Wright at 7-1. to 1. That, that is for sure. Um, but, yeah, I'll let you cover, Bunty. Well, just a word on Dimitri Vandenberg, to be honest, um, if I can. 
Premier League, something we're going to cover on a different video, but I would be very interested in him for the Premier League. And uh, as you said, 14 to 1 for the World Championship. I'll, I'll say it now. I, I think it's uh, I think it's when, not if, Dimitri wins a world title. He's too talented. He's too talented not to win it. I've never seen anyone, um, you know, of his age, whatever you think of him, the way he approaches the board and his character and stuff. Um, you know, it has been touched on by Wayne Mardell and John Part in commentary. The way he throws the dart, there is just very minimal room for error. It's very mechanical, very easy to repeat. He gets himself in a great headspace where he could just churn him out again and again and again. He could ready himself for big shots. He could hit 180s with anyone. He could finish. Uh, he's got it all. He's got the complete total package. He ran into Dave Chisnell having the game of his life. So, for me, he, he would have... I, I think Dimitri could have done what Dave did to Van Gerwen, no problem. Um, and I think Dimitri would have had a lot better chance of getting past Gary Anderson. Um, but this is all ifs and buts. Uh, what I will just say on him is I, I think he's a, he's a world champion in waiting and I, would, uh, I wouldn't leave him unbacked in, in future years, put it that well, way. Shame he couldn't do it the year that we backed him at 1,500 to one, but that's for another another chat. Uh, yeah, quarter final had to do him on that occasion, didn't it? Unfortunately. Um, yeah, well, Stephen Bunting. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't do a World Championship review and not give Stephen Bunting a mention. Uh, talking about player coming back to form, he's shown nothing all year. Um, he's had troubles with COVID. Obviously, his ranking was was sliding, um, and he's produced just some fantastic performances. Um, similar to Gerwin Price, really had to dig in. He was behind to Andy Bolton in his first round match and, and should have gone, really, uh, second round, pardon. And, yeah, Andy Bolton didn't do a lot wrong, to be honest. Bunting just sort of, I remember saying it at the time, he produced a couple of sets that were like the old Stephen Bunting. Little did I know at the time that was going to, you know, parachute him onto the verge of the final. Um, but it's great to see. We know he's got tremendous talent, like a lot of these players that we kind of discount for various reasons, and and he was a, a quite an easy one to discount because he just hadn't shown it for a long, long time, and um, it was just great to see him back to those levels. He's scoring, he's one eighty hitting, he's grouping Stephen Bunting because he's a fast player. When he's playing well, he's very, very watchable, and he, he's very, very talented as well. He knows his way around the board. I love the way he he knows his game. He sets up his shots without any hesitation. He's not one of these that steps back and thinks about it. He knows the knows the game inside out. And I'm really hoping this is a, a sign of Stephen Bunting getting back towards uh, where we know he can do. And he, he could definitely be a fixture in the last in the top 16 if he could just get back to this kind of form on a semi-regular basis. I'm not saying every tournament, but if he can put a couple of quarter-final, semi-final runs together in the majors this year, that'll be getting him knocking on the door of the top 16. And he's definitely talented enough to be there. So... Big congratulations to him on his on his performance. Yeah, he just looked dialed in with them new darts, by man. To be honest, that um, mm. I commented on his. Um, I tried to get him beat. I think three or four times I picked against him, but um, the one forty and one eighty hitting, the combination finishing anything between eighty and hundred and twenty was superb um, at times. Right, and I thought I thought he put up a real good fight against um, against. But, he uh, did price, yeah. price as it well. He would have beat a lot of people in that oh, semi final. He'd have yeah. beat Dave Chisnell. He'd have beat Dave Chisnell on semi final days. Uh, on on semi final day. So yeah, fair, fair play to him there. Um, in the next section, we're going to look at. Um, don't don't worry, we're going to be coming on to the opposite. Uh, but we're going to look at things that we got right. Um, I mean, when you when you've done, 20, I think we did 30, 29 videos, um, uh, mostly in and around the World Championship. So we was going to get at least one or two things right. Um, so yeah, a bit of self praise, but yeah, Gerwin Price. Um, I picked him to win the tournament, eleven to two, five to one, nine to two. Um, those kind of prices. Uh, I was low in confidence until the back end, but he got the job done, so I was happy with that. Um, I remember saying that Devon Peterson at thirty three to one was the most wrong price of any player in the whole tournament. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I pretty much got that one right. He was very unconvincing in his first game and got battered four 0 by Anderson. Um, in the fourth round. Um. We both said Peter Wright could could not and cannot be relied on. Um, was messing with his dart set up mid-game. Again, not even between different rounds. In the same game, um, yeah, he bowed out to to Gabriel Clemens, who pretty much put in a career best. Um, and then Searle, we both um, fancied Ryan Searle to go pretty well. Um, he didn't go quite well enough for either of us to make a profit from him. Um, but he but he went he went further than his odds suggested at the, at the outset. Um, so yeah, he's going to be apparently uh, training or practicing with 
Gary Anderson, the runner-up. So expect a bigger and better 2021 from from Ryan Sill. Yeah, well, just from a personal perspective, obviously we started off with the the three nils that I put up in round one, and that was a case of what could have been really. I mean, it did it did win, it did return a profit, but I mean, it just could have been so much more. We had a a couple of the games, one of them voided, of course, Martin Claymaker pulling out with coronavirus, uh, which was a real shame because I really fancied him uh, to have a run. And, and on the topic of, of players to watch, I would definitely say he's one to watch next year, but I'm sure we could cover that in more depth somewhere else. Um, yeah, and then obviously Jason Law uh, had him to win uh, 3-0. He, he managed to drop a set to the Russia Dmitry Gorbachev um, and then ended up knocking out Michael Smith in the next round. So, yeah, saved his best performance for the day that we didn't need it, really. Uh, and Callan Rids as well destroyed his Australian opponent, but also managed to drop a set somehow. But, yeah, there was a lot of uh, good stuff in, in round one and some uh, some solid on-the-money predictions, I think. Um, in terms of runners who I thought might go well and are kind of flagged up in the in the early preview, um, I did give some uh, kind words to Scott Waits. I thought that even though he was uh, ranking... Um, way lower than than you would perhaps expect. I expect him to go quite well. It was very unlucky not to beat Nathan Aspinall. I mean, he came through an absolute classic with Matt Campbell, one of the games of the tournament uh, for sure. And then had another one with Nathan Aspinall where he, he nearly won it um, with some, uh, you know, he was pulling out some exhibition-style finishing in uh, a very tense deciding leg. And he, and he spurned a number of match darts. But look, Scott Waits emerged from this tournament with a ton of credit um, I did say that I was hoping Joe Cullen would go well. And I, and I kind of said before the, the game against Van Gogh, I thought he would perform. Uh, he was so unlucky, of course. Joe Cullen turned up and, and played the game of his life and, and lost in a last leg decider to MVG. Uh, but yeah, look, there was some there was some ones that we got wrong as well. And I have to put my hands up. I was expecting a lot more from Simon Whitlock. I was very disappointed with his performance. The way he went out to Christoph Ratajski, 4-0. I know Ratajski had an excellent tournament himself, but... It was just kind of, uh, if you watch that game, it was two players both not really playing well, but Ratajski was just kind of doing enough. Simon has had a fantastic few months. He probably come into this World Championship in as good a form as he as he has since he was making semi-finals and, and whatnot. So I, I really did expect a big run from him. I thought he was in a good part of the draw, as shown by Ratajski making the quarterfinals and, and going in as a favourite there. I mean, Simon would have been a favourite against Stephen Bunting if he'd made the quarterfinals. So, um, yeah, disappointing that one. Uh, I just put it down to maybe a little bit of uh, burnout. And also, that was one of the first games after Christmas. And and I just wonder whether he got caught cold a little bit with, uh, you know, I don't know what his situation was with with family and stuff and, and Christmas. I don't know if he spent it in a hotel room. I know Christoph did. Maybe that played into his hands. We don't know. But, um, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on, on Simon in the new year. And then the other outright selections, well... I can't be too disappointed with Jose de Souza. He averaged a ton and got walloped by Mervyn King. Uh, well, we we spoke at length at the dangers that Mervyn was going to pose in this tournament, and and it was a shame he didn't turn up like that against Gerwin Price because I think he would have given him a major scare. Um, but there we are. Um, at Jose, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that defeat. I really wouldn't. It, it can happen. And it, when, if you play a player on form over over a shortish format, uh, it could happen very very easily, very quickly. Um, it, you know, this is he's a grand slam champion, Jose de Souza. You don't need to worry about whether he's gonna come back to form. He will. Um, see, I see, I am worried. I am worried on Jose, and I, I backed him, but uh, yeah, he got beat, he got he soundly, he got beat soundly, didn't he? By kick, was it 4 0 kick? Uh, yeah, which is which was a shock result, but he wasn't great in his first round. And I said in the, in the preview video that the only worried me would be the set format and his experience at it. Um, that shouldn't be the one and one and only factor behind it, but it maybe was a, one of one of many factors. But yeah, I, I've still I'm thinking now that D'Souza's not really beat any of the big big boys on TV under pressure. Now I know that sounds ridiculous given that he's won the Grand Slam, but I think the best player he beat in that run was <coughs> was um, Michael Smith and Je- you know James Wade in the final, who's beatable, you know anyway. Um, we've not seen him against the likes of. Um, Price, Van Gerwen, or, or Snake. We knew that beforehand. I mentioned it beforehand, and it was a was a, a slight worry. But yeah, and I know we're going to do a Premier League video as well. But I wouldn't have had Jose in the Premier League. I don't think he's ready. I mean, his his career has literally been about six months long, and he's now in the Premier League. I mean, 
and this is coming from someone who backed him. I've got, I've got concerns. Well, that's fair enough. I'll have to uh, politely agree to disagree on that one. I I just don't. Worry, I'm, I'm not worried about it off the back of. Uh, I, I think you know. Merv, everyone knew coming into that game that Mervyn King was also having a, a really good time of things, and uh, I think that particular game on the day. I mean, look, Van Gerwen got beat five 0 off Chisnell. Uh, it's not. It, it's not going to suddenly make Michael Van Gerwen a. Uh, um, any less of a player than what he is. I, I know what you mean about, um, you know, he's already been on the scene a short amount of time, but just the way he consistently hits over a ton, like week in, week out on the tour all year, like he's just got bags of talent and he's going to have, he's going to have tournaments where he goes out early doors, but he'll also be winning more tournaments again. And and the Premier League is an interesting one, maybe something we can discuss more when we talk about the Premier League. One other mention, um, I would give Daryl Gurney, uh, really good to see him bounce back to form because he's another player that's shown absolutely nothing. And I did kind of say after his game against Willie O'Connor, I think we're going to get a, a decent run out of Daryl Gurney there. 14 to 1 for the quarter and he actually had 108 uh, left to win the quarter um, and knock out Gerwin Price, which he couldn't take. And we all know, well, what happened to Gerwin Price? I can't remember. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, fair play to Daryl Gurney. Good to see him back and he's a potential Premier League runner, if he has a, a good year next year, we know he, he could get up to them realms again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to finish off really on what we got wrong, basically everything I said in a match in a day-to-day -day, um, preview or prediction I got wrong. Started with Sedler Czech being 2-0 up on the second, my first bet of the tournament, 2-0 up and lost 3-2, etc, etc. Basically anyone that I said was going to was gonna go well in a close match lost. Johnny Clayton said Whitlock would beat Ritaisky, got done 4-0 and then couple of games later when I went to Ritaisky he put in the worst performance that I've seen him on TV for years. Um, he was absolutely terrible on the doubles the day I was on him. I said Bunting would get um, would get beat multiple times and he kept proving me wrong. So yeah, I got I got a lot more wrong than I than I did right. Um looking at um I mean we've mentioned that we've mentioned most of them really um, I know Pat we've mentioned um Searle and Scott Waite so probably don't need to cover them here but a couple of players that I thought were uh, potentially unlucky, didn't really grab the headlines at, at the Worlds, but as a result might be underestimated in the betting markets next year. And chief at the top of that list for me would be Luke Humphreys. Um, mm. uh, he's starting to grow on me, uh, young Luke Humphreys, to be honest. Um, went at the first hurdle um, in the second round against... Um, oh, was it the first round? Uh, Paul Lim. Yeah, he went in the second first round, round against... First round against Paul Lim. Um I think, again, 2 nil up in sets, lost 3-2, but he lost little in defeat to me. Um, I just think he's one to watch at monster prices in, in 2021. He's going to rock up at some um, some of the majors. The UK Open, for example, comes early in the calendar. He's going to be 150-1 to one and, you know, it, it prices in that range. I fancy him to go well and have a run in a big tournament soon, you know, and it only takes a couple of quid when he's that when he's that price. Um, like I say, we mentioned so I'll just tip my hat to um, Bradley Brooks as well. He might not be seen on many TV tournaments in 2021, but if he can if he can squeak into a couple of them, I'll be keeping an eye on him because I think he did very very little uh, wrong. He's the world youth champion, but only won that title about a month before he went and made his Ali Pali debut two 0 up against uh, Dirk Van Dijvenberg, who made the quarter final, and it was just lack of experience really that saw him not win that game. So really want to look forward to Bradley Brooks. I, I like the way he plays. Yeah, and another one that I think we both like the look of is Nico Kurz, the young German who who lost a fantastic game to his countryman uh, Gabriel Clemens. Uh, Kurz looked looked really good in this game, took some fantastic three figure checkouts um, out in the match, and and looked right at home on the stage. Uh, just a word of warning on Nico Kurz: he hasn't actually got a card at the moment, but he is going to Q School, and you would think he he. He must have a real chance of, of getting a card at Q School if he turns up and plays anything like he has done in the last couple of months when we've seen him. Matt Campbell is another one that I would love to see go to Q School and have a go at his card. He's got bags of ability. And uh, yeah, and, and another one that I'm hoping is doing Q School, and I believe he, he will, uh, Danny Baggish. We, yes. all, we all know Danny, he, he managed to get rid of one of our uh, fancies, Damon Hetter in round one, another man whose price is worth keeping an eye on because if Hetter had had the run that a lot were expecting of him in this tournament, he'd be much shorter for upcoming events. So keep Hetter on your radar for sure. But yeah, Danny Baggish got rid of Hetter, got rid of Adrian Lewis. So um, it'd be good to see Danny uh, give it a go. I know he's got his family over in, in America. Maybe professional darts isn't something he wants to pursue, but the game would be a better place if we could have a top quality American player uh, on the circuit. It'd be great to see the game grow over there. Obviously, huge country, huge potential. 
Um, and yeah, it just would be nice to see Danny. I know, I know Danny was going to give it a go last year and then he, he, he didn't make it for, um, I think it was an unknown reason. He, he ended up not going. He said he was going to and didn't. So I don't know whether he's had a change of heart. Maybe maybe COVID and travel restrictions and stuff might play a part, but one to keep an eye on, definitely. Yeah, um, one thing we did say in the preview video was there's off, more often than not a real left field um, player makes it as a good as a good run possibly to the semis final. Um, there's no doubt in that this year's one was um, Stephen Bunting, although we, we've, we're aware of him and he'd be a you know, former BDO champion, but he was 400 to one and made it to the semi final. So, a bit of play to win. But a lesson learnt from me and one that I'll be taking forward into next year is so, sometimes the form book can go out the window a little bit at the Worlds. All you've got to do is look at Daryl Gurney and Gary Anderson for that. Now, I'm not saying they're left field selections. Gary Anderson, a two time winner, but he went into this competition a 33 to one shot, um, <clears throat> injured, out of form. Daryl Gurney, badly out of form. He was 100 to one. One made the final in Anderson and one made the quarter final in Gurney and, you know, went to a deciding leg with the eventual winner. So, what I'm saying is, I'll be putting more em- uh, emphasis going forward in my world championship betting. Um, on overall major form and Ali Pali experience rather than the two or three months leading directly up to it. Well, even Stephen Bunt in the left field choice was a BDO world champion, wasn't he? So he had yeah. that experience in the big tournament, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we can all be clever after the event with hindsight and all that. But no, I think it's good to take things out of these events and, and make sure that you factor them in next time. Um, yeah, another one for me, like I often get asked by people, oh, what do you think about Van Gerwen for the Worlds next year and stuff like, should I just, you know, like build up on him and stuff, load up on him and, and stuff like that. My personal opinion, if you're taking anybody a year in advance to win the World Championship at anything below five to one, you're taking a hell of a risk because we saw Van Gerwen's form dip during the year and his price drifted during the year. Gerwin price was anywhere between sort of seven to two and eight to one just in the sort of month or two before the tournament. So I don't think you need to be rushing to take these players at the top of the market. You know what the time to get with, if you really want to get with a player, the time to get with them is if they're having a bit of a dip in form earlier in the year, because there's bags of time for them to sort it out. And these really top tier players, your Van Gerwens, your prices, your rights, um, even your, your Gary Andersons and your Dimitris or whatever, if they had a bad, if they have a bad couple of months, Roll it round to December, the Ali Pali. You can guarantee they'll try and bring their best game to the major tournament. So Absolutely. I, yeah. I don't think you need to rush and get players at, at like, you know, oh, get him at fours now in case he goes off six to four. Well, look, there's going to be plenty of opportunity over the year to get with players at, at better prices. And it was I think, five to uh, one in October last year. So there's Yeah, no I would I would say um, if you're having a world's interest this early, make sure it's at somebody on the, you know, outside of the 33 to one region and up. Uh, you know, someone who you think is going to have a big campaign and, and could shorten. I mean, what I would say on Van Gerwen is he said he played under plot. He averaged 99 against Dave Chisnell, which is you know, obviously world class. I mean, you would say that the gap to the chasing pack is is closing. So when the Taylor era ended and the Van Gerwen era started, Van Gerwen was by far and away the best for some time. The likes of Gerwin Price, um, of, who's come from pretty much nowhere, as we've said, and, you know, the younger talent have closed that gap. Did use his old darts throughout the, the tournament. We spoke about that pre-tournament. I'm not sure if or how he will get away with that contractually going forward into into this year when he's when so-called normality returns to the world and he can get to his supplier and develop new um new sets or or what or whatever. So keep keep an eye on that for Van Gerwen. Um just before we wrap up, we did have a a question from one of our regular um subscribers um mikey um and he had a quite a simple question but i think it's a very important one to address so hopefully you've made it into this far of the video mikey says who wins in a game of darts pie man or smith up well if i'm being if i'm being truly honest there's a little bit more to this um that needs to be said this isn't just a hypothetical situation we did used to play darts every Wednesday when we when we both lived in the sort of Warrington Wigan area. I'm I'm now in the south of England, of course. Um, but yeah, there was a, there was a period for a, probably about a year or maybe more where we were playing on a Wednesday night, um, along with a few other um, ex colleagues at, at um, Bet Fred, and yeah, we had some we had some good battles. Myself and Adam. I, I, what I would happily openly say is Adam, the more consistent of the pair, definitely. Um, 
I, I like to think I was a bit of a, a bit of a dark horse runner. I had my fair share of, of, of wins on the evening. Um, I, I would happily admit I wasn't as talented as the uh, the regular winners of that event, but uh, I, I took a bit of a channel, a bit of Mervyn King into my game. I'm quite happy to slow it down. I'm quite happy to stand close to people when they throw in, talk yeah. my way through the game. Yeah, I, I, I do like a little bit of the dark arts. I've got to be honest. I don't think there's anything wrong with winning at all costs, winning by any means necessary. We had a lot of times where, you know, Adam would storm out of the venue after losing in controversial circumstances. I would quite happily, you know, stir the pot if there was any kind of controversy or kickoffs going on between players. I, I'd like to sort of create rivalries and, and animosity between players and then, you know, kind of walk off once I'd stirred mm -hmm. it up. So I think these are all <laughs> parts of the game. And uh, yeah, put it this way, I don't think Gary Anderson would enjoy playing me. He'd probably have something to say after the interview. Whereas uh, Adam, definitely the more consistent player. But I don't think you've chucked a dart in a long time. Have you, Adam? I think that when you had the when you had the boy, the dartboard got packed away, didn't it, I think? Yeah, yeah. I used to have a, a little freestanding dartboard. But yeah, that's all gone. Like but... this one behind me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good question, Mike. And... Yeah, the uh, Betfred Darts League, as it was called, then got way out of control in terms of how much attention it was paid to it by the you know eight or ten regulars. We used to go to a venue that had two Carnage. boards. Um, we used to have Excel sheets and um, who'd beat who, and we used to have a group stage and two boards of four, and then semis and final. I mean, it was really bonus points for one eighties and going out in nine darts. We used to play three oh one, so there was a couple of nine dart legs, yeah, but at three oh one. At 301. So, I mean, you'll be happy to know, that, Mikey, that um, I was a 10-time winner of the, of the, of the BDL. Oh, he's done his going. research. So, yeah, I was the most frequent winner. Um, I wasn't the most talented player and I used to lose my rag regularly and I've not picked up a dart for um, about two and a half years. So, If you had to compare yourself to a professional, who would it be, do you think? Give the people an idea. God knows. I could score OK. My finishing was... Uh, it was either on or off. My finishing. I think you had the temperament of an Adrian Lewis. I would oh say, yeah, I had a poor, yeah, yeah, poor temp, poor temp. Like to give it out, couldn't take it. Yeah, the likes of Pie Man you used to get in my head, but Pie Man is a is, is great value on a on a darts night out if you're having one. He can do a, a brilliant rust bray. Um, yeah, yeah. Often, you know, often turns up with well, with no wallet, so you have to buy him a pint, etc. <laughs> and you know, he those days are gone now. I'm making a big dollar, you know. Yeah, well, we're YouTube um, stars now, aren't we? Yeah, well, look, maybe one day we could do uh, after the success of the PDC home tour, maybe we could do a live, a live game, three or one, you know, best of three. Yeah. Uh, as long as I've got some kind of microphone to do a bit of shit stirring in between legs, I'm happy to give it a go. Right. Well, before you get any uh, more outlandish ideas, we're going to cut you off there, Pie Man. So that's yeah. the end of our uh, wrap up video for the World Darts Championship. If you've got this far, thank you very much. Genuinely, thanks. We've had some. Um, Nice little feedback. We did some a record number for us on the final itself. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're the suit team out. So anyone who thinks that they're going to see suit and tie every time, you know, don't get carried away. It's not going to be every time, just for the special occasion. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll speak to you soon. Cheers.